Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this Bob the Minion. It's a nice size at 20 inches by 14 inches across. Now originally I was going to scroll saw this one out, and I will keep this template. It may appear on a next project further down the line. But what we're going to do today is literally just route out all the dark black lines. So it's one solid flush level. Then we'll paint that black, sand it down, and then literally just paint in the sections of the colours it should be. To give you a general idea, I did make a smaller one, and it came out quite nice, so I'm happy with that. And there he is. So you can just about see from that, the only route out areas are the black lines. And then we literally just painted it, so it's one solid, nice piece. So we're literally just going to do a bigger version of that one. As always for me, we've got our template stuck down on this recycled pine. It's a big solid chunk is this. It's over an inch thick. It's far too thick for this project. But it's the only piece I can find that's actually the size I need. And it was a free table given to me, so we're not paid nothing there. So as always, stuck our template down. Placed our carbon paper underneath and literally draw around that. I think it took me 10 minutes to sort it out. We can remove that now. We can save that one for the scroll saw project further down the line. So these are all on there nicely. I did Google a couple of images as regards to this centre pocket piece. Some it was clear, some had a circle on, some actually had a, looks like a letter G to me. So I've gone for the letter G. They were took off the Minions movie poster. So it's a little bit of a G there. I don't understand what that's for, but... Anyway, so if you do find a template that you're happy with, just do a little bit of research because sometimes the template's not quite what it should be. And I've also added some little crosses here for cross stitching, just all those buttons on instead of just routing them out flash, uh, flush, should I say. Okay, as always for me, for the line work, I'm going to go with my CNC bits. I use these all the time, they come in different degrees 15s, 10s, 20s, and 30s. We're going for a nice 15 today because we want it quite straight down cut if that makes sense. So it looks like we've done a scroll saw project and we've stuck the wood on afterwards to a nice black backer. Whereas we're basically just routing out the lines. So we want it nice straight sides as near as we can. So 15 degree. They have a Dremel size shaft on 3.175 millimeter. So you do require what they call an adapter collet 6.35 millimeter. That literally just slots into there like so. Now that will fit a quarter inch shafted router, no problem whatsoever. We'll set it to a nice depth that we want. I always have a piece of wood handy like this, with different markers. Find one that we're comfortable with. We don't want to go too deep on this. So maybe a couple of mil. So we'll set it to that one there. And then when we come to remove it, the rest with the end milling bits, we can set it to the same depth. Or obviously find a section on there that we've already removed. So once we've gone round with our CNC bits, either side of these lines, so there's a lot to do. We also need to re remove the middle piece. So for that, I use these end milling bits. These are actually fantastic because they clear out the side walls of the carved out area. Plus, they have the rough section at the bottom, so they smooth it out fairly good as well. And that will fit the same collet, so we just slot that out like so. Slot that one in there. They come with these barriers on now, different coloured barriers. I actually tried to remove that, but it's obviously for a purpose. And you literally just slot that down. Do you hear it tap into place? And that you know that's in the right area. And then we'll go inside the lines and basically remove all this all around here. Once that's done, a little bit of a tidy up. And before we start painting and doing the rest of it, we will cut it out with a scroll saw. But we'll talk about the scroll saw blade near the time. Okay, let's start routing this one out.
right you can just about see we've gone all the way around all our lines with the CNC bits quite powdery is this pine wood but that's just the way it goes so it's quite compact in there so you won't be able to see a lot but I can assure you we've gone around it all we removed small little sections that's just a nice little marker for when we put our end milling bits in now obviously we're going to pick one that fits inside the lines themselves we can go for the biggest one out of a pack of 10 and we know that will fit nicely in between there so we'll set it to that depth there and basically go around now and remove all these lines so it's such a simple case excuse me of removing our cnc bit like so we'll get plenty more projects out of that one and then slotting this one in like that into the silver end your adapter so the darker end that goes into your router bit and we'll just set it to that depth and we'll start clearing out all these sections here I did get a little bit carried away on this one I had all intention, intentions of leaving the outer line around the outer area so I could have something to follow with my scroll saw and then route out the section afterwards but I got a bit carried away and I've gone and CNC bit over that line it's no, nothing major just make it a little bit more difficult when we come to use a scroll saw because obviously we haven't got a pencil line to follow on but it's nothing nothing too drastic we'll get around it okay we'll set this in our little router and start removing the inner bits Right, you can see from that we've made it all the way around. Those end milling bits are fantastic for clearing out in these tighter areas. They leave a reasonably decent finish on it. But I still like to go around with a Dremel and a couple of sanding burrs maybe. Or even these engraving bits on the end of a flexi shaft. And they're ideal just to go in there and tidying up the odd little bits that are sticking about. And into these little tight areas here. That we can't get with the end milling bit. Before that, we are going to cut this out on a scroll saw. Personally, I like it as it is on this piece of wood. But the person I'm doing it for, they want it cutting out. Now, like I said previously, I made it hard for myself. Because I've gone and routed out right up to the line. Normally, we would have done the, the inner line with the CNC bit. And then I left the pencil line on the outside. And then when we come in with the end milling bits after it's been scrolled, scroll sawed out, we can just basically route off the edge without any issues. So I've made it a little bit harder for myself because obviously I've got no no lines to follow, as you can all see from there. And I've left the ear like that because I want some of the ear line pieces, should I say, to be forward and then some at the back. So it gives you a front and a back front and back so it's a bit more about it than just cutting it all out one boring level look at those lovely pencil lines i should add them all the way around never mind we shall continue that's it once it's back in focus okay the scroll saw blade today for me as always is what they call a spiral blade the good thing about spiral blades they do cut in any direction and with it being a large piece I will struggle to turn this on my little drapper saw. So the spiral, we can set it in 
Remember, smooth on the way down, rough on the way up. I have to use these adapter clamps on mine, unfortunately. And we can just start in one area and we'll cut it out like so. And hopefully I'm just going to cut right up to that line here that I've routed out on the top there. Just about to see it. So I've got to cut up to there. It's not going to be perfect. If anything, I might have to route off, excuse me, scroll saw slightly away from the line and then go around with a sander afterwards. And remember, it's over an inch thick. It's going to take some cutting out, this one. OK, let's pop it on the scroll saw and see what we can do. Right, we made it round with our scroll saw, Pegasus number 5 spiral blade. I only have a small workshop, so I found it easier just to cut off sections at a time like so. I mean, you can see how thick that is. That's over an inch, just short of an inch and a quarter thick is that. But it cut through it fine, no problem. I put these sections back on again, round here, if I can just show you quickly. We'll take these off just so you can see the idea. Cut around all the air as you can see. I replaced these sections back in again and I literally just routed over the three or four pieces of air in the background, if you know what I mean. We'll soon show you. If you can see from that, just about, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces of air at the front and one, two, three, four at the back. Just to give it a bit more. I call it a 3D effect, but instead of just doing the ear at the back, just a little bit more effort involved. They'll look better when it's all painted that. Okay, there we have him. He's cut out nicely, gone around well. I got away with not having the pencil lines. There's certain areas, if I can, if I can find them, like little lips on there, that'll sand off. And quite a big one there, look. But that'll, that'll all come away. So it's a general tidy up time now with the Dremel. As previously said, with some nice engraving bits, just cheap engraving bits. And we'll go inside and give it a tidy up, quick sanding around the sides, and then we're ready for painting. We'll do that next. Right, that's enough sanding down for me. We've done all the sides. They do cut nice those spiral blades. Some people have issues with them saying it's a rough cut. There was no sanding down on those side sections. Just a little bit of fluffing at the bottom as we call it. So we've gone all the way around. We've got him somewhere near. We've done the air at top there, look. Like I say, so many at the front, so many at the back. Just to give it a bit of a, a bit more depth to it than actually just cutting it out on a straight level. Now this pine is quite chunky, inch and a, just short of inch and a quarter. You can see how they've put the different sections together. So some cut easier than others, some route out easier than others. So just be, remember that when you're viewing your wood. Now painting wise, the idea is basically just put black on all the back of this. So in between all these routed out areas will be painted black. And once it's nicely dry, we'll give it a light sanding over just to make it crispier again. And then we'll paint the top, the colours, the way Bob should look. Now for the paint, as always for me, a bit of satin black. Nothing too fantastic. You get this paint from anywhere. No, no special shops required. And for the surface area, I painted that small one, if you remember. So I know the acrylics are fine. And these are just your cheap, box standard acrylics. Crawford and Black, these ones. And they work fine. And the idea is to water them down a fair bit one it just helps the paint flow a bit and two 
we're going to give it more of a stainer than actual solid block paint and that way hopefully this lovely grain will still show through the paint afterwards all being well a bit of brown for his eye and a bit of green for the other eye believe it or not bob has two different colored eyes okay we'll throw this paint on now we'll sand the black on first shall i say sand it down and then we'll put the rest of the paint on give it a nice spray of our clear just keep it nice and shiny it's an indoor piece this one and hopefully we're heading towards the finishing line okay let's start painting If only it was that easy. I did video the sanding down, but it was late at night and I just used a flash on the phone and it was just like being a snowstorm. You couldn't see anything. But you get the basic idea. So remember, we've put the black on, we've sanded it down, as you can see from that. That's come out really nice. Now they do go on about sanding sealers for paint bleed and stuff like that. I never bothered on this. And I can't say I really see a lot of paint bleed, if anything. These bits you see here at the end, if you look really tight, that's not actually bleeding. It's just we have not sanded it off proper. But there's a dark brown on there, so what's the point of going over the top? So yeah, no sanding sealer or anything on that one. So far, so good. Okay, we'll put on the rest of the colours and then come back. We're going to put our final clear spray on. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. We've given Bob three or four coats of the yacht varnish just to shine him up a little bit. It's an indoor piece, this one, so we don't have to go too crazy. And you can see from that, he's got a nice finish to him. So I'm happy enough with that one. It's a good inch and a quarter thick, so for hanging purposes, basically just route out a nice slit in the back. That's more than enough for hanging this with. And I like the watered down acrylic paint effect. Just lets you see the grain of the wood coming through like so. So that's it, he's finished. So that's 20 inches, 14 inches. I routed out, bobbed the minion and then scroll sawed out with a Pegasus 5 spiral blade on recycled pine. Thanks very much for watching.